Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're going to calculate the second moment of area of a square of side A by A. Notice that we picked a point at the very center, and we're going to calculate the following integral. We're going to say that the, what we call the torsional constant J, is going to be equal to the double integral of the distance from the central part of the square, which is R. We have to square that and multiply that times dA, and we're going to integrate that from, well, in the x direction from 0 to a over 2, and from 0 to negative a over 2, and same in the y direction from 0 to a over 2, and from 0 to negative a over 2. Now, we can draw a relationship between r, x, and y. We know that r squared, using Pythagorean theorem, is equal to x squared plus y squared. In other words, since dA is going to be equal to dx times dy, it makes sense to rewrite r squared as x squared plus y squared, which means that this now becomes a double integral of the quantity x squared plus y squared times dx times dy. And now, of course, we can separate that into separate integrals. This can now be written as the first integral, or the first set of integrals, of x squared times dx dy plus a second set of double integrals of y squared dx times dy. Notice there's a lot of symmetry between the x and the y direction, so whatever we find for the x integral will be exactly the same as we find for the second integral, the, the one that has y squared in it. But let's go ahead and do this. So in the x direction, we go from negative a over 2 to positive a over 2, and for the y direction, will be from negative a over 2 to positive a over 2, and of course, for both integrals. So let's go ahead and find the first set of integrals. So what we can do there is we first integrate y. So this is equal to y evaluated from negative a over 2 to positive a over 2 times, that would be the integral from negative a over 2 to positive a over 2 of x squared dx. And of course, when we plug in the limits, we get a positive a over 2 minus a, negative a over, minus a negative a over 2, which is really like adding the 2. So this becomes equal to a times, when we integrate this, we get x cubed over 3 evaluated from minus a over 2 to positive a over 2. And of course, we can't forget the second integral, so that would be plus the second integral of y squared dx dy, and that would be plus the second integral of y squared dx dy. Now when we evaluate this, we get a over 2 cubed, that's a over 8, and then minus a minus a over 2 cubed, that would be plus a over 8, and so when you combine all that together, this gives us, first I'll pull out the 3, that would be a over 3 times a cubed over 4, because I'm adding a cubed over 8 plus a cubed over 8, that gives us a cubed over 4, plus the second set of integrals, y squared times dx dy. Now notice we get 1 12 a to the fourth here, and since this is exactly the same integral, because well, it's not exactly the same integral, but because of the symmetry, we'll get the exact same result. This will then end up in giving us equal to 1 12th a to the 4th plus 1 12th a to the 4th, because we'll get the exact same result with the second integral. You can try it, and you'll see. So combine that, you get equal to 1 6th a to the 4th, and if we then solve for 1 divided by 6, just to get a decimal value there, we get 0 0.167. Now, in the previous video, we mentioned that the only way you can get an analytical result that is accurate is if you have a circle in a square, a rectangle, or any other shape. What we find is that if we calculate the analytical value for the torsion constant, and then we measure experimentally the value of the torsion constant, we actually get different values. Notice here we wrote down the experimental value, which is about 0.148 to the fourth, and analytically we get 0.167a to the fourth. 
So the actual measured result is a little bit less than the analytical result, which means that it's a little bit easier to, to twist a, what we call a beam a, that has a square cross section. It's a little bit easier to twist it than we actually would have calculated it or that we actually did calculate here in this example. But notice we get a fairly close result, and so it gives us a fairly good idea what the actual constant or torsional constant is. But this is how we do it analytically, and it's not that far away from the experimental result. That's how it's done.